UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres says there are clear violations of humanitarian laws in Gaza. Israel has escalated its bombardment of Gaza as preparations accelerate towards the launch of an anticipated ground offensive into the Hamas-controlled Palestinian territory. Polish opposition leader Donald Tusk says he's ready to form a new government after this month's national election. The European Commission announces new proposals to double wind energy production by 2030. The European Commission proposes measures to avoid future pharmaceutical shortages after a series of stockouts last winter. The UN Security Council was the scene of intense debate on Tuesday as Secretary General Antonio Guterres denounced what he called clear violations of humanitarian law in Gaza and called for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire to alleviate the immense suffering of Palestinian civilians. I'm deeply concerned about the clear violations of international humanitarian law that we are witnessing in Gaza. Let me be clear, no party to an armed conflict is above international humanitarian law. Nothing can justify the deliberate killing, injuring and kidnapping of civilians or the launching of rockets against civilian targets. The Palestinian representative described the lack of action from the United Nations since the war began as inexcusable. While the Israeli foreign minister harshly pushed back against Guterres for his criticism of Israel's Gaza campaign. Ofri, 10 years old, Mr. Secretary General, in what world do you live? Definitely, this is not our world. The foreign minister to Israel, Eli Cohen, later cancelled a meeting with Guterres and called for his resignation. Israel has escalated its bombardment of Gaza as preparations accelerate towards the launch of an anticipated ground offensive into the Hamas-controlled Palestinian territory. Israel says it hit a number of Hamas targets, including observation posts and anti-tank fire positions. At least 140 people, including many civilians, died in the latest overnight strikes, according to Hamas officials. It's claimed seven people were killed when residential buildings near a hospital in Gaza City were damaged. Later, Israeli aircraft dropped leaflets over Gaza asking Palestinians for information about hostages in exchange for a reward and protection for the informant's home. Hamas has responded to the Israeli strikes with rocket fire into southern Israel. More than 1,400 people were killed in the terrorist attacks in the region on October 7th. An estimated 5,000 have died in Gaza following Israel's retaliation. Amid fears the conflict could widen, Lebanon's prime minister has discussed the volatile situation along Israel's border with the commander of UN forces there. It follows days of fire exchanges between Israeli troops and Hezbollah militants. Poland's opposition leader says he's keen to get to work. Donald Tusk has the backing of opposition party leaders who together won the most votes in this month's national election. Tusk says he hopes the Polish president will make energetic and fast decisions in forming a new government. On Tuesday, President Andrzej Duda started talks with parties that won seats in the new parliament. We are ready to create a government. Thank you for the declaration that the leader of the party, the most popular in these elections, the opposition, will have a difficult mission to create a government. But this depends on the president and on the situation. Po konsultacjach u pana prezydenta. The president has 30 days to call the first meeting of the new parliament. He has to ask a candidate for prime minister to try to build a cabinet that can win a vote of confidence in the lower house. He could extend that offer first to the ruling law and justice, which won more votes than any other single party. Wind energy is a European invention and a European success story. But in the last two years, Asia has taken the leading role in the sector. And the EU only has itself to blame for this, in large part due to complicated official procedures holding back construction. 
It's why the European Commission is presenting new proposals to double wind energy production by 2030, one of the elements of which is the dismantling of bureaucratic obstacles. First, we want to accelerate projects by easing permitting constraints. The EU has um, four times more wind capacity in permitting um, than under construction. This must be rectified. EU member states agree that by 2030 the share of renewable energy should be at least 42.5%, preferably reaching 45 to achieve this, the installed capacity of wind energy must be significantly increased from 204 gigawatts in 2022 to more than 500 in 2030. And the competitiveness of European companies must also be improved. This requires that Chinese companies operating with unlimited state support do not distort the market, something also addressed in the Commission's proposals. And this wind power package gives a good push in that direction as far as wind. We still have very high levels of dependency on China, for example, when it comes to the rare earths that we use in permanent magnets, when it comes to the glass fiber materials that we use in the blades of our wind turbines. The EU wants to ensure its energy independence and avoid a similar situation to what happened with solar panels, but China now clearly dominates the market. As winter approaches, European pharmacies are once again facing drug shortages. Every day, pharmacists in Brussels move heaven and earth to find a solution for patients. Tous les jours, on, on est obligé de, de faire des recherches pour essayer d'assurer le, le suivi des traitements des patients. On essaie quand même de trouver des alternatives quand il y en a. On essaie de se dépanner entre collègues si c'est possible. Et, et vraiment, dans les cas les plus compliqués, ben oui, là, on doit dire non. On doit renvoyer vers le médecin pour qu'il change éventuellement le traitement si c'est nécessaire. Last year, France's Medicine Safety Agency recorded over 3,700 reports of stockouts or risks of stockouts. Pressed by member states, the European Commission on Tuesday presented a series of measures to avoid future shortages. It's proposing the immediate launch of a voluntary European solidarity mechanism for medicines. For this winter, we're immediately setting up a new vol voluntary solidarity mechanism. This will enable any member state facing shortages to seek support from other member states who may be able to share medicines if they have a sufficient supply. The Commission also intends to draw up a list of critical medicines by the end of the year. It's a document that consumer protection organisations consider particularly important. It will be a useful tool because it will uh, include, I mean, it should include also medicines that meet priority healthcare needs. Um, and it will facilitate that then the authorities can focus a bit more on these medicines, can analyze the supply chain, can identify vulnerabilities, can introduce measures to tackle those vulnerabilities. And also the idea is to have a bit more cooperation and reinforce cooperation on these uh, critical medicines. And all these are measures that we value positively. In the long term, the Commission proposes to diversify its global supply chains through international partnerships with third countries. Finally, it also wants to strengthen production capacities in the manufacturing of critical drugs and active ingredients. However, it's being careful not to talk about the re-industrialization of the sector on the continent. People versus Meta. Dozens of U.S. states have filed a lawsuit against a company that owns Facebook and Instagram, accusing it of harming the mental health of children and teenagers, also of misleading users about the real dangers of social networks. The lawsuit has no ideological or geographical color. It has been filed jointly by 33 attorney generals from states led by both Democrats and Republicans. In the spotlight is a highly addictive algorithm that is potentially harmful to the mental health of children in particular. Mark Zuckerberg has faced lawsuits before. 